Right, Dr. Ismailian, seen in Damascus, uh, uh, Israeli Foreign Minister Zippo Livni has said that uh, has called Hamas illegitimate and said that uh, they're willing to work with legitimate Palestinian factions. The case is, if she believes in Israeli democracy, uh, why shouldn't she believe in Palestinian democracy who brought uh, Hamas to power? Well, <coughs> uh, in fact, Israel and uh, Mahmoud Abbas both of them they brought Hamas to this uh, what we say the political arena and I think just uh, their target the final target is just to kill what we say the seed of jihad the seed of fighting the seed of resistance against resistance against the uh, occupying uh, troops in Gaza or West Bank so I think there is no democracy in Israel, if there is a kind of democracy, as uh, our colleague now in London said now, uh, how can we believe their media, how can we believe, for example, it's civil Livni uh, who is lying, uh, for example, she, she, in, in France, or the, she now blocked the, the, even uh, the French uh, initiative, and now uh, Israel itself, uh, alone with the American, they are uh, standing against all the, the human or entire world, uh, and they are hiding their crimes uh, behind their F-16 and uh, Apache and those now, as you said, now uranium weapons against the civilian. Where is the democracy? The democracy is not to kill uh, an occupied people uh, in their own lands and just to say that we are the only democratic uh, uh, country in the region. Uh, I think this is absolutely nonsense, nonsense from civil Libni and even from its ally in the West Bank in Ramallah, uh, President Mahmoud Abbas. All right, uh, we have Israeli President Shimon Peres rejecting the possibility of a ceasefire with Hamas. So where does that leave peace efforts then on both sides? Shimon Peres. Uh, Shimon Peres as a president of the Zionist regime now also he's hiding uh, also uh, what we say uh, all his crimes in Lebanon and he was of course defense minister of Israel and now he wants just to beautify the shape of Israel and that we are going to Gaza not only just to, to occupy Gaza but on but only just now to 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 eliminate Hamas from the political uh, uh, now uh, administration in, in Gaza and just to, uh, to, to uh, prepare now the political life for uh, Mahmoud Abbas to come and to rule Gaza then just now they dictate all their art articles and their agenda on uh, the, uh, uh, the administration or the, the government of, of Palestinian in, in Ramallah and just to work as they, uh, they want or they order them. All right, uh, Mr. Okefe uh, in London, uh, why do you think Israel is not giving in to a ceasefire? Well, I, I think actually uh, what would be a logical understanding of what's going on is that the war on terror, as an example, is supposed to eradicate terrorism. The theory being that we'll go out and kill all the terrorists and, and then we'll have won and the world will then be at peace. This is absurd, of course. We know that when people's families are murdered and their land is stolen, and their human rights are denied on every level that this is actually the best recruiting tool for terrorism so in truth since Israel's existence relies uh, on the Zionist agenda in particular relies on a constant state of war justifying your ability to take hold of land to justify your military operations using this uh, military power to foster that hatred and create the kind of bitterness that you know predictably will come back in one form or another will then of course justify your continuing response which you know you're always going to be able to win so it's a great manipulation at the same time I, f I, I myself try to put myself in the position of Hamas and the people of Palestine and I ask actually the people in the West in particular British and American people regularly in conversation I ask them to ponder the possibility that 
face, say for instance, the United States, the most powerful nation in the history of our world. Say for instance, it's not the most powerful nation. In fact, it's relatively weak. And a nation from halfway around the world decides to invade America. And in doing so, kills a large percentage of the population, steals its land, and all of this is done based on lies. Now, what would we do in the United States or in Britain? What would we do in that case? I know full well what we would do in America and Britain. I know that we would fight with every single weapon we had at our disposal. I know that we would have no mercy at all with any of our brothers or sisters who collaborated with the invader and occupier. So I see what Hamas is doing and what I see Hezbollah having done, what I see the Iraqis doing, is exactly what we would do, what I would do, if my nation was being invaded and what our people were uh, experiencing the same level of pain and suffering. But unfortunately, this is the trap. This is the trap. And that trap continues the cycle of violence, so we must be intelligent. Where do we go from here is, I think, the question we must be looking at more than acknowledging yet another crime. We know what Israel does. We, we know. Look at it. There's no humanity at all. Where do we go from here is what I think we should be addressing at this point. Indeed, in addressing that point, you, you mentioned where do we go from here. What do you think uh, the Obama administration would do? I don't think, unfortunately, that there is any indication that the Obama administration is going to be any way marketably different than uh, George Bush. In fact, I think that the Obama administration in many respects is far more dangerous because it's the enemy you don't know. And I'll quote Malcolm X when, when he was asked about uh, the presidential elections uh, back in the 60s between Barry Goldwater, who was an out-and-out -out racist, and you knew it, and, uh, and Lyndon Johnson, who was the left-wing liberal. He was asked which one he preferred, and it seemed to be an obvious question. But he answered by saying, well, it's the devil you know versus the devil you don't. And he asked, also, he made a comment about progress. We think we're making progress with Obama. What I see is uh, uh, actually a knife that's being stuck six inches in, and if you pull it out three inches, is that progress? I don't see Obama as giving any indication with his Zionist uh, chief of staff, with his Zionist uh, vice president, with uh, Hillary Clinton uh, ready to obliterate Iran if necessary. How is that in any way indicative of an a administration that's going to be anything uh, but the same, same old tired story? And, and ultimately, I, I think those of us who are waiting, those who are waiting for Obama, the savior, are, uh, are sadly mistaken. That's not going to happen. All right. Uh, Mr. Ismail Yassin in Damascus, uh, do you think there would be any change in the next uh, U.S. administration and in general in the whole of U.S. policies? Well, I don't think there will be a very remarkable gener change, uh, change in the American policy because uh, Mr. Obama, he, he, he co uh, commented on uh, the Bombay attack in India maybe about 20 or 30 persons that were killed in that attack. So uh, now, Mr. Obama, where is he now of all this uh, massacre in Gaza? Where is his mercy? Where is, for example, his human uh, dignity that uh, he cannot comment only, uh, for example, a few sentences against, or will just now to explain now what's happening now. Now, Obama now is hidden now in this, uh, uh, for example, at least at uh, these uh, this moments now, and George Bush now, every, uh, every day he is now commenting that there's, there will be no end for this attack until uh, the stopping uh, of uh, Hamas rockets against Israel. So Obama will not, we mustn't be so uh, optimistic about coming uh, the new president of the United States. I, 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 hope, I hope not, but I think, I think uh, Mr. Obama is going just now to be uh, very, uh, maybe a, a worse copy uh, uh, than, uh, than his uh, ex-president, uh, George uh, W. Bush. And in the Arab world, till now, we didn't see Mr. Obama. His policy towards, uh, for example, the Middle East, uh, uh, first problem. But uh, just now, for, uh, from the first chapter of his book now, we didn't, I think we, did, we don't expect any kind of change in his policy towards the Palestinian cause because he himself has been trapped by APAC uh, that uh, Zionist American uh, group that uh, support Israel for all its policy against the Arab and the Muslims here in this region.